Hey everybody, it's Strangers One of Three here today with another replay cast. We're looking at the uh, Peon in a Fiji with a MASD division at tier 7, top tier on fault line. But before we get on this with this replay, I'd like to say to uh, follow me on twitch.tv slash strangers123. Hopefully, we'll get a live stream going on later this evening. Also, I have a Discord server. There will obviously be a link in the description below. Join me there, ask me questions about Wall of Warships. Just join me for a chat, whatever you feel for. There's a lot of opportunities out there to, well, I mean, considering I do uh, mostly Wall of Warships based educational content, a chance to ask me uh, questions and, uh, you know, I have helped people on that Discord with things they want to know specifically about Wall of Warships. So join there if you want to have an ability just to freely chat with me and whatnot and ask questions with other people playing Wall of Warships. Anyways, getting on with this game, we are in the Fiji with a Puke of York and Sharnvost Division. They're uh, right here, <clears throat> looking at the spawns, Sharnvost over there, and uh, a bunch of cruisers over here. It's kind of normal, battleships tend to spawn like here and here, so uh, from the northern side, the southern side has like a tendency to get one battleship maybe here sometimes. It's like the spawns are a bit in balance on this map, in all fairness. What's also balanced, they get a Fubuki, they also get a Bliot first. So they basically get Radar Smoke plus Destroyer, which is a major disadvantage for us. And it looks like we're actually heading towards Bravo. Not a bad decision overall. We do need to be careful though. If the enemy Fubuki is smart, the Fubuki will go to B. Because, you know, just knowing that we don't have a Destroyer can outspot everything trying. Can easily get himself out of the way. There's also no Blyothfus to uh, Sudden Radar. As you can see, we have no Radar available on our team whatsoever. So the enemy Fubuki has a major advantage going into B. In fact, if... You know, she's contesting B. We're going to be from uh, this area. We're going to be getting spotted. Coming in here, we're also going to be getting ourselves spotted. It's incredibly unlikely that we would, like, <clears throat> if we push, uh, we'll push in towards here and hope she spawned over there, or pushed in this direction and hope she spawned up there to put this island between us. But, like, what are the chances? It's, it's really low. Anyways, we do spawn enemy Shardvos crossing, but uh, we need to be careful as we're starting to enter this cap. We can also spot enemy cruisers there and there. We need to be careful of the Bliathfus, because, you know, Bliathfus 8-7 concealment us 9-8, I think? Yeah, 9-8. So, we need to be careful, because, uh, you know, Bliathfus do outspot us. And if the Bliathfus does decide to push into, like, this kind of an area, and, you know, spots us first, smokes up, and we push into the island, we're gonna get find ourselves likely getting radared, and thus would need be so good. Anyways, spoiler luck, Bliathfus over there. Looks like Fubik is there as well, because that Belfast isn't in the cap yet. So that's pretty nice to know. I wouldn't open fire right now. I would make sure we stop and then... Ooh. I wouldn't open fire first. I would smoke first, then open fire. Because as we can see, there's still half a minute left of the cap. By the time people swivel turrets around to engage us, there's going to be like... And get shells on target, there's going to be like 10 seconds left on the cap. And that's bad because if we get shot and reset, we need to stay here for a lot longer than we really might necessarily want to or hope. I think that's a little bit shot under. So I think that's not really going to hit the, uh, the stewards. I was slightly under, there we go. This should be a lot better, but then I think this George is accelerating, so I think this is just gonna miss. Or at least be uh, reasonably ineffective. He turned around, so uh, there you go. Didn't really achieve much. Looks like we're shooting the Ignatius now. Normally, if you want to keep situation awareness, don't do not do the scroll wheel stuff. Let me just take control. Let's say, for example, you know, you're like this. You know, th this is the view you want to have full awareness. Press, just press shift. Because if you're doing the scroll wheel, you can see it, it takes time, get in, and then, you know and whatnot, scroll out, it takes a lot of time, so honestly, you're better off just uh, trying to uh, press the shift button or whatever button you've found to the view, just so you can uh, get yourself back out of the uh, the zoom camera, the binocular view, and get yourself into the good old uh, proper camera view that you kind of want to have. Regardless, settings of fish draws is armor her group, I mean, the armor her is unlikely to take any of these, and even if, you know, Armour is coming. We need to be careful because we have like five and a half kilometers uh, physical ability range firing through our smoke. So we don't have much more of a buffer zone to go with. What we're doing now is reversing. It's kind of a, a reasonable move to make. Reverse and then angle ourselves so we can go forwards again to try to stay inside of the smoke if possible. Allied Emerald is approaching. There's no way that Armour got himself in range to torpedo us. So that's at least something nice there. Slightly under lead and we're skidding out of the smoke. It's something we need to be careful of. Very, very bad move over there overall. This could get us really yeah, quickly punished. That's never going to do much because the Shaisen now is... Uh, Shaisen now? Shardverse is trying to accelerate forwards. And, I mean, he, he basically just needs to hit us and he's going to lolpen us because, you know, 13 millimeters of armor. So that's overall pretty bad. Our smoke's starting to expire, but... Ooh, spot of luck. The Emerald deploys his smoke. 
personally, I would just heal right now because uh, we're not really getting much holding on to the heal. I mean, I don't know the exact uh, value of the heal. Still, so however, gets himself stuck on the island. That's not going to. Uh, that's unlikely to find itself doing much for us. The guy's likely going to try to reverse. That's under lead. There you go. Much better, but. Uh, Actually, we get this. We got a spot of locks. That's one citadel to pick up the kill with one full pen. So uh, that's actually that's actually really nice because if we hadn't picked up that kill, then you know he would live a little bit longer, keep spotting stuff, and I mean picking up a free kill like that, despite not having the best salvo in the world ever, we at least get ourselves a good chunk of experience for ourselves to grind through the Fiji, or you know to build Captain XP or whatever we're trying to do. Regardless, with the Emerald Smoke here, we can sustain ourselves for a little bit more, triggering a Hydro, worried about the Fubuki that we knew was somewhere around a good move overall. Looks like the Shanthorst is continuing the reversing shenanigans. I think that's going to go towards the turrets and not do too much. You really need to be careful with the... Uh... Oh, never mind. He basically stopped reversing and let us uh, shoot him. That's going to go over to the back end of the ship. So that's... Yeah, that's not going to do much. I bet you most of it's going to bounce. Two full pens. One of them... Uh, well, actually, both of them were saturated. That's going to go towards the gun turrets, that's unlikely to do much either. There you go, one full pen of uh, Dimash. Having looked at the overall situation on the map though, since I saw the Sharnhorst's health, 10k there, he's really low HP, but I mean, at least we're dealing damage to the enemy Sharnhorst. Um, overall, we're not actually in that good situation. You might think, oh, we've killed three enemy ships, only lost one, uh, we've got the B cap, we, you know, we've got a points lead, we're locking down A. But here's the thing to keep in mind, if we look at the map, this guy's buggered, these guys are in a certain gun, which means this guy and this guy are probably going to get screwed over, because these guys will easily just trade them, unless this guy gets like a super good to uh, torpedo rush into them. This guy's buggered, then this guy's going to get farmed, because there's a lot of stuff over there. This guy's out of the game. Our Sharma's division is low uh, Thiv made is low HP and needs to run, <clears throat> so we're not even in a good position. And what we need to do, realistically, is to consolidate our units and get him out of this really awkward middle area, and either push down this or push down this. Personally, at this point, I'd probably recommend just gathering everyone, going up there and pushing down the Gnais now, and hopefully save... I, uh, the York's really beyond saving, honestly. He's, I don't, he, he cannot turn out there, so you can't actually start kiting and building distance, so... The best thing this York can possibly do is to rush the Gnais now and try to torpedo trade them. But what we should be doing is, we can see our Sharnos is heading away, Pyrgo York is kind of joining us. We need to just group up, go in, and... Get rid of the Gnice now, especially since we have uh, the Miyoko still reasonably in the area, and, and these guys are still alive. So we just need a, because this is, you know, these guys are basically doing what we should be doing here. These guys are just going ahead and killing whatever they have uh, in front of them. So we need to be able to uh, get the opportunity to do the, do the exact same thing against our opponents. Overall, we're doing some reasonable damage at the end of the journey, so that's kind of nice uh, for us. But uh, I wouldn't really spend too much time, because right now, if we continue like this, there's a good chance we can easily lose this game if the enemy team just uh, pick themselves up properly. We need to keep in mind that Pidioni does have 114mm of belt armor. There you go, the enemy Gnais now do pick up our York, so it's the uh, Iron Puke that's left there. Yoko looks like she's trying to get behind them. I mean, hopefully the Iron Duke is smart to stagger his guns to keep uh, both of the Gnais now reset. That's actually going to be good, because uh, if we can stop them from capping Charlie, and there you go, another reset comes in. If we stop them from, cap from uh, capping C, we'll at least keep a reasonable points incoming. It looks like they left the cap, they didn't even want to try to capture it, they just want to insert on the uh, Iron Duke. So that's kind of nice for us, because it keeps the points incoming. We're going to need this points income if we want to, if you want to have a chance to win. Especially since our division mates are kind of splitting up, and they kind of try to poke over there. I mean, one of the guys kiting up in this kind of an area, maybe the... Uh, <clears throat> Maybe the Duke of York's going to be better for that. And the uh, Sharnos joins us to try to push down the Gneisenaus. If we can push down the Gneisenaus, we're going to be a lot, in a lot better shape. Emerald's engaging the Bajani, but with 4k health, even something as crap as an Emerald should easily be able to handle that. Because it's uh, he's not going to get battle all pen by AP, uh, I think. So, uh... Actually, I'm not sure. If, if the Emerald has 13 or 10 millimeters of armor, if it has 10 millimeters of armor, then you know the Bajani is going to lol pen it from the front. Because, you know, 14 by 3 rule, right? So it's 10 multiplied by 14 by 343 millimeter guns with all pen that. Anyways, the puke gets inserted in, but the Miyoko is behind them now, so hopefully we can actually kill this Knaes now, then kill the other one. But we don't want to bleed too much health. And there you go, the Kyrnish goes down as well, so... Uh... All right, now, these guys just need to start kiting and focusing on killing the Knaes now while kiting away this over there. There's a good chance that... Uh... Well, hopefully the... Um... 
Arthur Emerald, yeah, Emerald can should easily be able to kill that, but Johnny, he's going to lose a lot of health in doing in the process, but at least he's killed them. So it's a tier 5 for tier 6 crews when he's distracting the tier 7 crews now, at least temporarily. He, he won't. I doubt he's going to last long. But um, Duke York's making a mistake, he's pushing towards this. Sure, he's tier 7 versus a bunch of tier 5s, but a bunch of tier 5s will still murder a zero armor battleship. 25mm or 30. Who cares if it's 25 or 32? It's going to get murdered regardless. So. Uh, you know, just spam HE at the Puke of York, and you pretty much auto win. Anyways, Amyoko is engaging the Gneiser now over there. Looks like a really, really poor angle to be taking an engagement on. Let me see. Uh, he's so low HP, he gets full pen once, he's gonna get uh, screwed. We're slowing down here, so we're never gonna be able to catch up. We should just push ahead, because this um, Gneiser now is likely to be fully focusing on blowing up the Miyoko. And there you go, Miyoko explodes. This is a really awkward situation for us, though, because, well, first of all, you can torpedo us. I mean, that's not a big issue overall. It's, the torps aren't a dangerous thing. We can't actually engage this guy and keep all of our main battery on target. Well, we can now, temporarily, as, you know, the nice now is not really able to shoot us fully with all guns, but that's not going to last for too much longer. There you go, all guns engaged, but we need to either sail completely flat broadside or sail bow on angle towards him. Sailing at a 45 degree angle like this is risky. Yeah, that, that's why it's risky, because if you sail at a 45 degree angle, here's the thing, shells coming in, they hit you, they hit you at this kind of an angle, your, your armor is bad, so it, it, they'll, you know, he'll hit your belt, he won't also deflect, at, you know, let me just, uh, let me see if we can, there we go. <clears throat> the angle we basically display to him, if we display to him this kind of an angle, we can't shoot our rear turrets, we, you know, they can't shoot, however, any hit here will open into your citadel, any hit here will deflect, however, at this kind of an angle, Anything that hits you here will citadel, so it's suddenly a much bigger citadel area. That's gonna overpen, but like all this is gonna citadel. Maybe a deflection, area. even that can potentially citadel. So you'd have to be careful of this kind of uh, thing. Anyways, ooh, dear oh dear, we're not trying to smoke up in front of the Knights now. Hopefully he doesn't realize we're slowing down. Oof, 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 oof. That could easily have been our doom right there, but uh, hopefully we can pick up some additional. Oh, I wouldn't skid out of the smoke like this. It looks like what's that? I'm not sure if his plane just got shot down or anything, but if his plane is still alive and we're outside of the smoke screen, that can be incredibly problematic. But I saw like a little flash in the top right corner of the screen. I'm not sure if it was his float plane, the uh, scout, or this guy's scout, uh, or well, plane that got shot down. But uh, at least for the moment, we're unspotted, so that's a spot of luck. And the guy doesn't really shoot at us outside of the smoke screen, figuring that you know we're still inside of it. So that's another spot of luck for us. But if we can pick up this guy nice now without bleeding too much health, I mean, we already bled a, a heal rather unnecessarily to the enemy Sharnos at the start of the game, as our Puke of York did, but it actually rams the enemy Gilead's Tatsada down, but uh, he's probably going to find himself going down rather soon. There you go. Gungood finishes off our last div, mate. And we're actually now spotted. Probably the Fubuki. Fubuki behind us is spotting us, so this is not a good situation overall. We're back in the smoke, but hopefully um, we're not going to get deleted right now, because <clears throat> that would be rather unfortunate. Because if we get deleted right now, our div mate doesn't have the health to win this. So yeah, uh, he's an enemy, you know, Gnai is now angling, we kind of need to shoot at his, uh, the top of his superstructure, the uh, sep no, 16mm of standard armor, which is, uh, well, it's not lull penable, but the, um, you know, high pen angles of the Royal Navy Cruisers does give us the, uh, well, the, the opportunity if you want to Okay, it's at using a heal there, half of it's kind of wasted, but again, we're so low HP that it's better just to use that heal there than to die with one heal remaining. So yeah, we only have one heal left after this. Regardless, pushing out, so there we go, spotted. We're probably a little bit too early on this push out, I'd say, because our Sharnos is not really ready to move yet, so we kind of need to just tuck ourselves behind this island over there, otherwise we're just going to get shot at and bleed health unnecessarily. We still have two smoke screens, but I, I think basically this game's gonna be decided on the results of the next smoke screen, I'd say, because we're just so low HP over there. The enemy team would have to screw up royally to be able to throw this, because they pretty much just, well, throw and throw. They, they have a bunch of tier fives and a tier, uh, you know, five. Well, actually, they have two tier fives, a tier six and a tier seven. But uh, most importantly, they have a Fubuki that's still alive, and he can spot, he can torpedo the Shan horse, he can. Uh, just lock down the caps and prevent us from obtaining it. For the moment, we still have a bit of a points advantage, simply due to the fact that we own Bravo for a lot longer, but oh dear, Insta Smoke. I would Insta Smoke right here, sitting here and trading Miyoko like this is not good, but 
Actually, Hydro first, we catch the Fubuki. I would immediately focus on shooting the Fubuki. That's aim way too high, he's gonna angle out, so that's just not gonna. Yeah, a bit unfortunate, we don't actually pick up the kill on there, but we're smoking already, so we're not gonna be able to aim the shot. That's not gonna hit anything at all. Useful, torpedoes incoming. We need a reverse out of this, but the second salvo was rather poorly aimed, and the Miyoko almost picks up the kill against us. We need to immediately use our heal there. Hopefully, we can pick up some good Citadels against the Miyoko's. Uh, 10, I think, I'm not actually sure the exact armor, but I think it's either 10 or 10.2 centimeters armor. Japanese ships, we don't use inches for that. Picking up a good chunk of citadels against this guy, leaving him very low HP. Hopefully our Shano's division mate can pick up the kill against that. That's slightly underled, and the island looks like it uh, ate all of that, which is a bit unfortunate. But our div mate picks up the kill. And we've been shot down the plane, so if uh, nobody's around to spot our div mate, and I wouldn't be poking out like this, uh, we're over poking a little bit. Thankfully, Gangut really doesn't know how to shoot. Do dropping torpedoes on Gangut. I would focus main battery on killing the Kjernishberg, just eliminating enemy ships, and I would make sure that we start reversing. We definitely, this game, need to... Uh, if there's anything uh, to pick up on improving, it is definitely management of the speed. We almost get way too far ahead over there. And now with our uh, Arshan not having a plane online, he had a scout plane, a float plane spotter plane, so he's not going to get his plane up until another 30 seconds, I think. If he's, that is, of course, making the assumption he's running premium consumables. But uh, with nobody to spot, we just need to back ourselves out of this situation and be aware of the Fubuki. Uh, smoking there, like smoking late in there, was a bit of a mistake because uh, we put ourselves at additional risk. But granted, the Fubuki being there and permanently spotting us wouldn't have mattered, so uh, the. In hindsight, the correct decision would be to wait another 2 or 3 seconds before spotting, kill the Fubuki, then smoke. Granted, chances are we're going to find ourselves getting exploded, and of course instantly heal there. But um, the, realistically, the, you kind of would have wanted to insta smoke the moment the Miyoko was spotted. Fubuki gets spotted behind us. Uh, pretty much relying on a secondary to kill the guy here. He double fires us with his guns, but we actually pick up the kill with the secondary. So that's a, a secondary close quarters expert Confederate high high caliber this time for us. One more kill, we get ourselves a Kraken. Well, cracking result overall, but. Dear oh dear, we have knocked off this guy, Revolutia in our face, and of course with the very high chance of Fubuki torpedoes. What? Wow. Just, just wow. He's never gonna sell into that. You kind of would have, uh, you would have wanted to aim them more like uh, this kind of an area, just you know, a little bit less uh, distance, because there's no way he's gonna sail full speed ahead into the Shaun Austin, sail into our fish, right? But uh, right now, we should hopefully get our smoke speed up. We need to make sure we stop and drop because if we get any closer than this, any closer to, to, to the two kilometers, we're going to be permanently spotted. Gangut makes a massive mistake. One gets himself stuck, and uh, two doesn't try to get closer to us. Because at least getting closer means that he can secondary us to death, and he doesn't even memorize the position. You just shot this area, the ship's not there, you might want to like shoot somewhere else, like behind or in front, you know, try to bracket a bigger area. You know, it was, uh, the target was low HP, of course, granted the heal could have been a possibility. I would uh, launch widespread right now, instead of launching all three torpedoes on the exact same spot. If we do shoot, we're obviously going to get spotted, but our div may pick up a torpedo hit, so... Uh, we pretty much just need to hit one at this point, sailing forwards, getting ourselves spotted temporarily. But, uh... There we go, that's done. I'd instantly use the Hydro just in case the Koenigsberg's on the other side of the island. Doesn't seem to be the case, but we spot a Minder! So oh dear. This is probably gonna be the end of us. I would not aim there. Lead here, lead here. You can shoot him in the back turret and get a Citadel there potentially, but uh, you can see as we shot all of it into the belt, we only, uh, well, we didn't even aim the world's best there, so we don't pick up too much damage and we go down ourselves. But killing the Gangut did give us the Kraken, so overall a very, very good result there. And it looks like a division mate should easily be able to just go around the corner, insert gun, and kill the Kjernishberg, because he's going to be under the 20 seconds of penalty, because he fired at us uh, through the smoke screen, and he was too close. And there you go, shells in the air, shells going out to target, and there goes the Kjernishberg. Overall, very, a lot of, a lot of, of, a lot of risks taken that could easily have been the end of us and the end of the game. We, overall in the division, bled way too much health in the beginning with Bravo. Pushing into the middle is rarely a good idea, especially in a rather tier 7 heavy game like that. Three top tier battleships and I think three or four top tier cruisers as well. Especially in a, in a game where there's no real destroyer threat. Uh, it means, you know, torpedoes you can kind of try to dodge. I mean, if you get bad luck with dodging torpedoes or, you know, the enemy kind of, um, you know, predicts your move correctly and you get 
screwed by that. And granted, you, well, you're gonna get screwed and you're gonna die, but uh, if you don't actually get punished by torpedoes, uh, you know, with more cruisers that are shooting at you, you bleed a lot more health a lot faster, so overall, you kind of lose your ability to sustain into the late game. And in a game like that, it's about being able to try to gang up and gank on enemy uh, individual fleets in that kind of a situation, which is kind of the opposite of what we did. We kind of split up a little bit in the end, but we should have tried to con uh, consolidate our forces and just kill off the enemy TS-7s or the Group 1A, though granted killing off the TS-7s is going to be easier because they don't have an invisible destroyer that's going to be constantly throwing fish your direction. But yeah, we kind of... Uh, threw away, in a way, the Puke of Yorkina division for no real much of a gain. I mean, he traded down the Gilio Tessara, but uh, at least that's something. But if he just kited, because I don't think he'd used too many heals, and I don't think he, you know, got the chance to expend too many heals overall either. So if he just uh, kited, spanned some HE, because a kiting Puke of York is still fast enough to avoid a Fubuki, you know, Fubuki torpedo launch from, uh, you know, close range, the Fubuki would still have to get into spotting range of the Puka York to actually be able to, uh, to uh, torpedo that without, you know, the Puke just simply outrunning the torps. So it's something to keep uh, in mind. But yeah, other than that, uh, individually we need to be a lot more aware of our movement, especially inside a smoke stream. We had multiple cases where we skied it out. Although in the end, against the Knights, now when we have smoked up, um, not in front of his, well, pretty much in, you know, next to his face, in the uh, near the Charlie Cap, um, that smoke screen skidding out of it wasn't too big of a problem because we didn't get punished for it, but uh, we easily could and kind of should have been punished for the moves. Secondly, if you're gonna, you know, if you're being shot up by a battleship and you're not in a Neptune or Minotaur with a roll or you know emerald, but um, these things don't really have that big citadels. So, either you angle to him properly so that you can try to deflect that from the belt and hope he doesn't shoot you in the bow. A lot of people don't know how to shoot like uh, targets that are kind of trying to bow tank at full speed, especially that kind of close range when you're just advancing slightly slanted. A lot of people don't know how to shoot properly. So, yeah. You either do that or you sell completely broadside and hope they overpen you. And remember, it's I think 13mm of standard armor, which is basically all the armor that isn't your citadel. So, chances are. Especially with the German battleships with the high velocity flat arcs, they're gonna have a hard time actually hitting your citadel. However, if you angle like you did, they have a much higher chance of wiping you. You're exposing a bigger area of your citadel that is vulnerable to being citadel, and you're exposing parts of your ship that would not previously have been citadel that now also can lead shells into your citadel. So just be aware of your angling and your movement inside smoke and outside of smoke, and try to work on that so you can perhaps bleed a bit less health, because we did lose the first heal to the Sharnos, rather unnecessarily having reversed ourselves out of the smoke screen. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this replay cast, and I'll catch you guys hopefully on stream, twitch.tv slash strangers123. Otherwise, King of the Seas tomorrow, perhaps you'll be watching that. I'll be uploading highlights and uh, probably even a esports style re-commentary like I kind of enjoy. So I'll leave, leave a this, well, comment in the comment section below. Would you like me to upload the original recordings first? I bet uh, Flamas and Fada will be uploading theirs as well. Or would you like me to do a actually good esports style commentary on it first and then upload the original recordings? Your choice. Give me a comment in the, the, this, not the description, that's mine. The comment section below or join me on Discord and chat with me there. And, uh, you know... Have some nice conversations overall. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take care and I'll catch you guys in the next one.